Today we're going to be taking a look at my top 21 best Nintendo Switch remakes and remasters and I'd also say enhanced ports. This is a very confusing and somewhat difficult list to put together because there's so many different, I would say, definitions of what people consider remake, remaster, and port. But I decided to go over all of the games that I've played and just list the ones that I like the most. So I have 21 for you guys here. So let's go ahead and start off at number 21 and we've got Mario vs. Donkey Kong. This is a chill relax and kind of just sit back and play on a Saturday and just enjoy it. It's not super long. It's not very difficult unless you want to go for the 100%. And I think that graphically, it looks fantastic over the original GBA release. It's got some fairly good music as well. The controls are spot on, runs at a blazing, perfect 60 frames for a second. It looks good, runs good, plays good. Pretty much everything is okay with this game. It just doesn't really go above and beyond in terms of what you would expect. The gameplay isn't that that's super exciting. There's some brain teasing puzzles in there and some fun to be had and some content in there, but it's just nothing too crazy. But it's still overall a great remaster to get into and it's a bit overpriced, some would probably say at the $50, but if you could pick it up for a bit cheaper or trade in something or get your hands on it, I think that it's definitely worth your time, which is the most important thing here. So in at number 21 is Mario versus Donkey Kong. Next up at number 20, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu slash Eevee, and I swear this game would be higher if they were able to make it to where you can play the game on docked or on your TV with standard controls. For some reason, you can play with standard controls portable mode, but you can't do it in dock mode you have to use motion controls which is just super weird but overall it's a remake of the original pokemon red and blue now obviously it's not as good in terms of what people thought about it at that time frame because pokemon was a revolutionary game when it came out back then and i remember being all into pokemon so much back in the day but it's still a really good game and some people say it's the best looking Pokemon game on the Nintendo Switch. And honestly, the graphical style is very clean, runs good, doesn't have a lot of the issues that some of the current Pokemon games do have. And it's all of the cool things that you did like about the original, but then also enhanced a bit. You have the new catching mechanics, which can be fun. I mean, obviously just going out and catching Pokemon all day can be a little bit tedious at times, but the trainer battles are much enhanced here. And it's a lot of fun to go through and fight all the different trainers. It's definitely harder than what I thought it would be when it first came out. And it's a game that's been kind of forgotten over the time of the Nintendo Switch, but it's still a good, really reimagining remake thingy. I'm not really sure where to classify it as, but it's still really good. I enjoy it. I think the music is fantastic in here. One of the most underrated things about Pokemon games is the music. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu Eevee, obviously taking those original tracks and kind of remixing them a bit, having some of the original scores, adding in some nice chimes to it. So love it. Just some few issues here and there, but overall still a great remake of a classic game. Next up at number 19, we've got new Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. So this would be like the super enhanced port here with some nice little graphical touches just because of the resolution being tuned up. And I think that this game is underrated. This could absolutely be on an underrated games list. There is a ton of content in new super mario bros u deluxe you've got all of the base content in the original game which was still really good on the wii u but then you have the super luigi u content added in so you essentially get two of the games kind of mixed into one you get that at 1080p 60 frames per second it looks good runs good plays good it's got a lot of great qualities to it and it's got a lot of challenges it's harder than you'd expect with the challenge modes that are in the original base game in addition to the super luigi u content which was already Already made to be more of a challenge run for the experienced 2d mario players out there so you combine all of that into one package on the nintendo switch there's a reason why people are buying this game more than mario maker per se right that's a game that didn't do as well this game is still in the top 10 for best selling nintendo switch games right there so i think that there's a reason for that people realize hey this is classic good old school 2d mario gameplay and it's fun to play portable mode or on the TV, controls great as well. Never really gonna make any mistakes because there was an issue with the lag in the game or controls, input delay. So yeah, I had to put it in at number 19 
on my list next up at number 18 tokyo mirage session sharp fe encore a really weird game and got off to a really bad foot people expected there to be fire emblem and shin megami tensei crossed together that's the original thing for this game and it ended up being like more of a k-pop or j-pop anime infused style type of smt game which people didn't expect that and that kind of doomed the game commercially but overall the game was still very fun to play one of my favorite smt press turn command battle systems out there it's very good and there's some nice nods to smt and to fire emblem in there your mirages that you use those are essentially fire emblem characters warped over from their dimensions or something like that some type of story with it and tiki's in there as well and then you can upgrade your characters you can find different base components you can do a lot of different things in there i think that the combat system is very fun very flashy as well you're pretty much performing in front of a stage and everything it's got some okay dungeon designs kind of persona ish but at the same time, it holds its own value and it retains its own identity to where people that actually did try the game out felt, okay, this is pretty good. There's just some kind of corny, lame uh, censorship things from the Japanese version to the US version, which is very unfortunate that they didn't you know, revert that back. Uh, but at the same time, it's still a lot of fun to play through. And I enjoyed it thoroughly. And I do think that it's worth playing if you're into JRPGs. Tokyo Mirage Sessions in at number 18 on the list. Number 17, Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe. A fantastic remaster of the original Wii game that was kind of forgotten at this point. We've got so many Kirby games on the Nintendo Switch. When this one came out, people were like, oh, they're remastering that one. Why not Triple Deluxe or why not Planet Robobot, one of these other games? But I still think that Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe is a fantastic game. And the more that I played it, the more that I really started to like it. It's got the extra scenario added in as well. It runs great, 1080p, 60 frames. It looks good too. Like they took the graphics and you can tell that it was touched up quite a bit. So it looks good, portable mode and on the TV as well. Can be a bit easy at times, but they do have challenge modes that are built in for those that are looking for the completionist runs or just a bit more challenge in the game. Plus that extra scenario gets a little bit harder as well. So I would have liked to see maybe a difficulty option added into the game. I think that would have made it better for those who want a little bit more of a challenge, maybe when you take a hit, more damage, things like that. But at the same time, it's still a very solid game. Plays great, controls really good, whether you're using Joy-Cons or you're using the pro controller so i have to recommend it in here at number 17 number 16 mario party superstars so many would probably consider this a brand new game and maybe i would guess but at the same time it's a mix of all of the older mario party games remade and put into this one so i didn't know whether i wanted to put it in or not so whatever if you think that it shouldn't be here that's fine just disregard it but i'll put it in here just because there is a lot of classic mario party games put in here and the cool thing about this game is that it has the online play it has some of the best i would just say graphics just the graphical look of a mario party game this probably is the best looking one i really love what they did it looks sharp and clean and the online plays not bad at all runs pretty good as long as people got some good connections it's easy enough to kind of get in and play with your friends and i really enjoy the different games they brought over it seems like they brought over all of the best ones from the various different mario party games there are some notable admissions which i will admit which kind of brings it down a bit but when it comes to mario party this is the best rated mario party of all time at 880 so 8 out of 10 essentially average there so that kind of tells you something mario party is kind of built for a specific specific audience in terms of things but overall I love Mario Party Superstars. This would probably be the only Mario Party game that I would have at any top list of mine. So enjoy it, Mario Party fans. It's right there. Number 16 of Mario Party Superstars. And at number 15, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. They fully remade the Game Boy game and they needed to remake it because it's so old at this point. I think people forgot about Link's Awakening. And when it comes to Zelda, this isn't one of my favorite Zelda games out there. But as a remake, it's very 
well done now the only issue that i would say for this which probably didn't have it up higher is that why isn't this in 60 frames for a second there's no reason for a game that we're going to talk about later when it comes to zelda being put back is in 60 frames but this game isn't and i think that it hinders the experience as a classic old school isometric action game you want that smoothness from transitioning from screen to screen you want that playability and it just kind of moves all over the place i think that if it was locked in it would be a lot better now everything else about the game is charming and nice it's got some really cool puzzle design the graphics look very cute and i feel that overall it's a good game when you start playing through the bosses and you start exploring the items the mini games there's a lot of cool stuff about this game it just has that one flaw when it comes to the frame right in there and just kind of how it moves all over the place i mean even locked in at 30 with really low input delay and all that that probably would would have been better than it kind of going all over the place so that's the only problem but outside of that the game is fantastic the music's also good too love the music as well so the legend of zelda Link's awakening the remake comes in at number 15. next up at number 14 at crisis core final fantasy 7 reunion an unexpected remaster of a game that most people didn't play an unexpected remaster at the time of a game that a lot of people probably missed because it was a psp exclusive now it did well when it originally released but it's not like square enix was like oh yeah here we go crisis core on all these other systems they kind of just left it on there so it needed to be remastered and they did a great job with it i think that the controls and the updates the ui the quality of life features make it a way better experience playing it on your nintendo switch in portable mode than playing it on the psp because there was a lot of annoying things with the combat system and with the game just in general on the playstation portable and much of that is fine-tuned tweaked and fixed and just added in just for better play on the nintendo switch combat gameplay music controls all of that is enhanced when it comes to the remaster here so it's a very good compelling package for people to go out there pick up and play and if you want to get into the final fantasy 7 universe because they're doing so much with it right now crisis core final fantasy 7 reunion definitely needs to be one of the games that you play moving on to number 13 pokin tournament dx one of my favorite fighting games of all time. It's a game that I played so much on the Wii U and when they brought it over to the Nintendo Switch, I wasn't expecting it to be in the first year of the system's life within the first number of months i think it came out that summer in 2017 and they enhanced it quite a bit it's definitely the deluxe version you've got new game modes the three-on-three -three modes that they have in there they enhanced the online play a little bit as well they tuned up things overall for the game added a lot of quality of life features and a number of new pokemon as well as part of the dlc package for the game so i really really like pokemon tournament dx it's held back a little bit by the fact that the single player mode is still kind of repetitive and not necessarily that great there are some issues with the balance of the game and the items and the other support pokemon that you use so that can be a little bit of a problem but overall it's still a super fun game to play it's got smooth 60 frames per second it's got great multiplayer features in there playing with your friends when it comes to the lobbies and the online play and it's even still up to this point you can go on there and find games to play not a huge community of people playing but there are still online matches and how they did the online matches was pretty cool too because it's like bandai namco's tekken series they're the ones who made this one so you level up and like you get different titles and everything plus there's a ton of customization options for your titles of what you want to go on online and your avatar too so that was a nice touch pokemon tournament dx i'm waiting for a sequel hopefully switch to we get a sequel to this game because I loved the original on the Wii U and I love the re-release of it even more on the Nintendo Switch. Next up at number 12, The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD. This is a game that had so much controversy when it was first revealed. Many people felt that they did nothing to the game because Nintendo didn't detail it right then and there. Now we later got an updated trailer where it showed off a lot of the new features that it will have that make it a much better experience than when I played it back on the Wii which I didn't necessarily love the game when I played it on the Wii I thought it was solid but I like it a lot more here because 
they gave you an option. You have the option of using motion controls or using button controls. Now the button controls are still a little wonky because they tried to adapt a game that was fully built around Wii Motion Plus into a game with button controls. So it comes off a little bit weird, but to me, it's still a great way to play the game and a lot of fun. It's the first ever Legend of Zelda title when it comes to console game on Nintendo native hardware at 60 frames per second. So that's very nice. Seems like it never budges either from there. There's a bunch of quality of life features when it comes to traveling, the items that you get, your UI, different things like that. And being able to play it portable mode is a nice benefit as well. So I actually played through it and had way more fun with Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD than I did on the original release on the Wii. It's still a very good story, very good game when it comes down to it. Some annoying puzzles that I absolutely hated, but the story is absolutely worth it. And the setup and the cutscenes, all of that is very well done. And it looks better than ever. They did retexture and smoothen out the game quite a bit from the original Wii release. Doesn't look anywhere near as blurry or fuzzy as it was. So yeah, I recommend it wholeheartedly over the original release on the Wii, except for some people, they love the motion controls. Those maybe aren't quite as good, but I think that it's still solid overall. So Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD makes the number 12 on my list. Coming in at number 11, Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp. They took the original Advance Wars games, which were awesome, and then they put them together remade them completely, added online play, adding different modes, and it's just fantastic. If you love the original Advance Wars games, you're going to love this game. The campaign, everything in here, the content, and I would even say for a buy now before Rare, you definitely want to pick up that physical copy of this game, because I don't think Nintendo made a ton of of them and we haven't gotten the sales update so there's many reasons to pick up this game but it is one of the best remakes on the nintendo switch i think they did a great job with the game it's really simplistic in its art style the music still just as good as it was but the simplicity also probably lends to it not being a, like a mature rated game or something because you are blowing people up with tanks and machine guns and all sorts of uh, weaponry but it doesn't feel that way because of how it looks overall so i absolutely love both of the campaigns i think it's a phenomenal remake and one of those games that for all strategy rpg fans out there this is a game to go out there pick up and play all right guys we're in the top 10 live alive in at number 10 and this game caught me completely off guard because i try to do my best to know all of the classic rpgs especially the classic square enix jrpgs out there and, and usually i'm pretty good with that but when they announced this game i had no idea what it was i think i saw it in a magazine or in a game store that had imports back in the day but to be honest, I couldn't 100% say that was the case or not. So it caught me completely off guard. They're like, hey, we're remaking a Super Nintendo JRPG that never came over to the West in the HD 2D art style. Wow, that was just incredible. And Live Alive is super cool. You play through different campaigns in all different time periods, and then it all kind of comes together towards the end of the game. So it's like a bunch of different games combined into one because they all kind of play a little bit different here and there, have different protagonist scenarios, time frames, and all of that. So it's cool. Kind of has like that Chrono Trigger aspect to it, that early 90s JRPG aspect, that innovative touch that you would see in Square Enix back then in the 90s so yeah it's an incredible experience from start to finish not too long of a game either you can get through it in about 20 hours or so or maybe even longer if you kind of do more in each of the campaigns but yes it is a game that's definitely one of the best remakes out there and something you should definitely try out on your nintendo switch if you haven't already done so next up at number nine is trials of mana speaking of square enix let's talk about trials of mana a full remake of seiken densetsu 3 and with the upcoming Visions of Mana coming out. Trials of Mana is a game that I've definitely been thinking about quite a bit because for what it offered, it was pretty incredible. When have you seen a Super Nintendo game remade completely Unreal Engine 4? Kind of unique when it comes down to it because most companies are not going to take that risk with this game, but they did and it paid off over a million plus units, which led to the confidence of Visions of Mana. But Trials of Mana is a fantastic game in its own right. It's got beautiful visuals. It's a double A style of game. Don't expect the top, but they're not bad at all. Runs good, looks good, plays good as well. Multiple different 
different campaigns, six different characters to pick through, and you can customize which characters are your party members for each of the playthroughs. You can balance that out with different magic and physical attacks and the stories that you have. So I really enjoyed it. Plus, there's a ton of classes that you can do too to evolve your characters and get new abilities. And the story is not bad at all. It's classic 90s mana Square Enix, you know, kind of has like that cheesy atmosphere to it, but a very serious undertone. So I really enjoyed it. I think that Trials of Mana is fantastic. Go out there, pick it up and play it if you haven't already done so. So it comes in at number nine on my list. Number eight, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Another one of these enhanced ports brought over. They didn't really do too much with this game, but there's Funky Kong. It started the meme. New Funky Mode added in. So any game that can start a meme like that, which adding in the Funky Mode, deserves to be in a top 10 of re-releases, remakes, remasters, whatever you want to put this together as. Plus, it's an incredible game. It's still one of the best 2D platformers out there. Some people feel that it's the best 2D platformer of all time. I would definitely put it in the top category. I think it's earned its spot in the top 10 to 20 or so, I would say, of 2D platformers of all time because of its great controls, because of its very levels. The graphics are really good. The score music is just perfect. I can't really say anything bad about it. Plus, it's got a variety of characters to use. And there's Funky Kong. I mean, come on now. No, but outside of Funky Kong, you got Cranky, you got Dixie, you got Diddy, you got Donkey Kong, you got the characters, you got the world, you got the graphics, you got the music. You've got pretty much everything that makes a phenomenal 2D platformer, but the controls are so pinpoint and accurate and it really needs to be because this game is very difficult and that's probably one of the best things about it. You combine the great level design with the difficulty of the game and the pinpoint perfect controls overall that is what makes this game just special there's not really any other game that i've played on the nintendo switch from a 2d platformer perspective that has all of it put together as well as donkey kong country tropical freeze and that's the reason why it's number eight on my list next up at number seven is star ocean the second story r and this is a great remake of the original PS1 game, a game that a lot of people forgot about. Star Ocean is a series that's been struggling with its 3D big releases, but its classic games are fantastic. So Square Enix is like, okay, let's kind of redo the classic ones. And this is the best that they've gotten so far. And many people feel, myself included, that Star Ocean The Second Story R is the best game in the whole series. After playing through this one, on the Nintendo Switch again, I absolutely have to agree. I think that the updates that they did, because I did play the original game back then on the PS1, the updates that they did when it comes to the story tweaking, the UI, the added features, quality of life things, and combat is just really good. The game feels fantastic to play, and it looks incredible too. The art style here is a mix of the HD 2D and the remake of just like a normal PS1 RPG that you might see. They kind of combine that together to create a really cool look of the game. You always feel at awe, and you're like, wow, that looks awesome in terms of what they did. So I have to give a huge, huge nod to Star Wars in the Second Story R, and I hope that they remake other PS1 games like this. I mean, we can see something like Xenogears. I would love to see Vagrant Story remade. Obviously, it wouldn't be just like this one, but you guys know what I'm talking about. PS1 RPGs that are kind of crusty at this point and remaking them, retooling them, and making them far better and more playable in the modern sense. So hopefully, Star Ocean the Second Story R starts a trend with Square Enix and their classic RPG library. Next up at number six, Metroid Prime Remastered. This is the quintessential remaster that we've seen on the Nintendo Switch. And the only reason why it's not a little bit higher is because they didn't really add too many different things outside of the game looking a bit better. So we're kind of splitting hairs here once you get into the top five, top six or so. But I love this game. I do think that Metro Prime Remastered is fantastic. I do have a little bit of trouble playing it just because first person games make me nauseous and I just have problems playing them a little bit. But overall, I played it in short stints and I thought it was great. The controls 
are fantastic. I love the fact that you can use the IR pointer controls. You can use the regular standard controls, Joy-Cons, or if you want to use a Pro Controller, or if you want to use it on your Switch Portable Play. Like They give you multiple different options in order to have your own play style. I would have liked to see maybe like an autosave feature kind of put in, because once again, I'm playing the game in short stints. So I can't always play it long enough to find some of the save points, but they're not too bad. And there's a few other things I think that they could have added to make a little bit better of an experience when it comes to the UI or some of the features. But overall, graphically, it's incredible. Like graphically, and the game itself is so good. The controls are just as good, just as smooth. And I think it proves to me that some of the older games are just completely built different. They're built in a type of way to where they feel timeless. You can play it at any point and it feels good to play through. In Metroid Prime Remastered, the fact that they didn't really change many different things within the gameplay kind of proves that with what's going on so far. So Metroid Prime Remastered, phenomenal game, made it to number six on my list. Next up at number five, Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. And this game, I would have a bit higher as well. If they put this game in 60 frames per second in 1080p, I think that would have been better and had it a bit higher for me. Now the game itself is just as good, if not better than any game on this list because Xenoblade is a phenomenal game. I love the story. I think it has one of the best, if not the best stories on the Nintendo Switch period. It is very good. And if you combine that with Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and Xenoblade Chronicles 3, Future Redeemed, then yes, it is the best story when it comes to a trilogy. But the game itself had a few rough spots that I felt could have been better, especially playing the game on a 4K TV. But I still feel that it's a fantastic release. I think that they did do a good job of smoothing out the frame rate in places as well because the original release had some dips that were pretty bad. It still looks a lot better. They redid the faces and the hands of the characters. So it looks a little bit odd with some of the blurry outfits, but then the faces look completely kind of remade a bit. But I still think it's fantastic. And the gameplay itself is still super unique. There's not a lot of other RPGs that are very similar and I think that the gameplay in this game is peak. It is superb. The vision system and all of that, the arts, the breaking and toppling, that is just so good. How you have your characters set up, the arts that you learn. There are so many good things about Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. It's just a shame that they couldn't get that running at 1080p 60 frames per second as it's a Wii game. And that's why it's a little bit lower for me, but still really good. Next up at number four, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Now, once again, I struggled with putting the ports, enhanced ports, remakes, remasters, all that, so whatever. I just decided to just add in my favorite ones that could be anywhere considered that. So Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is in at number four, and over the course of this game, it added so much content and so many cool things to it. It was tough to not say this is just an incredible package and way better than the original game, which remember Mario Kart 8 Deluxe was still awesome when it released, but you can't access all of the content that this one has. So to me, it's almost kind of morphed into something different from the original game because of the expansion booster course thing that they did. If you have the Nintendo Switch Online Plus expansion pack, you get that in there included as well. So to me, it was awesome to go back and race through all these different courses that they had. And they added some really key adjustments when it comes to the gameplay, having two items instead of one completely changes it in terms of how the game plays and the strategy that you have from the original when I played it on the Wii U compared to now at this point. They added a bunch of new characters, which does affect kind of how things go with the carts and the customization. The online play is great too, doesn't really have any lag or issues there. There are some things that happen that are kind of weird with it when people have bad connections, but overall, it's still really good online play. And the features that they added in, finally adding the custom lobbies where you can remove the blue shell and do different things there was very good, which wasn't in the Wii U version. So with all the things that they added in, it's almost a completely different game. So I had to put it in at number four on the list. Next up at number three, Bayonetta 2 plus one, one of the best packages on here. And as a pure gameplay perspective, Bayonetta 2 
to me is just pure bliss. It is so good. The original is awesome and I do love Bayonetta 1, but Bayonetta 2 takes it to the next level. It looks incredible. The gameplay is so fast and sharp. The combos that you can do, the upgrades that you can get, the Nintendo content that they added in there. Bayonetta 2 plus 1 is just a phenomenal experience that I feel that everybody should play, especially if you're into action games. Now, as a re-release, it's interesting because they didn't really add too much content at all and that's why it's not higher for me although it made it to the top three so that's still really good but definitely they could have probably added like maybe like an extra scenario or something else that could have made it a bit better but as a game it's already one of the best games ever made so when they brought it over it's even in better frame rate they did improve it not quite locked at 60 at all times but it still runs overall at a better average frame rate than the original release on the wii u and when it just comes to playing the game when you press the button and what happens on screen and how instant and fast there's barely any problems there so that's what makes the controls fantastic in the game along with the button alignment and everything that they did do so i have to give Benetta one plus two the number three spot on my list next up at number two super mario 3d world plus bowser's fury this is a nice one to put in here because everything that was an issue with the original release that people had they kind of fixed which there wasn't many things wrong if you remember it was still a super high rated game on the wii u there was some fantastic things that they did but people were upset that there wasn't online play they added in online play which is kind of hit or miss based off of the connections that you have but it's still good that it's in there especially if you just want to play it with somebody else and they have good connections you're going to have a great experience i would recommend playing it probably with just two people just yourself and somebody else and just make sure that you guys have good connections and the game plays good online but the bowser's fury part that is the nice thing it's essentially a look into the future i do believe bowser's fury and the structure of an open world mario game to where you can just go and do the different levels at your own pace and wherever you want that will be what the next major mario game will be so i think this was a test run for that and i felt that they passed the test run with flying colors because it is very fun to be able to just go up to any area explore at your own leisure don't have to worry about jumping into the paintings and having the loading screens and going to different places there you can just open up the map and see where you want to go and go from there so overall i think that the package when it comes to like a remaster remake putting everything together there adding what they did add was fantastic for what you got overall it was just fun and plus super mario 3d world is just incredible the controls are great the different characters that you can use are really good and the multiplayer local is very fun to go through so super mario 3d world plus bowser's fury makes it in at number two on my list and coming in at number one we've got super mario rpg i didn't think that i'd have this game in at number one but when i was thinking about what makes for the quintessential remake experience super mario rpg pretty much ticked almost every single box they redid the graphics completely it looks the same style but then different so you're not going to alienate the people who loved the original Super Mario RPG. Controls are perfect on there in the games. It's 60 frames per second completely, so you're not gonna have any issues there, so they upped it. I think it was 30 on the Super Nintendo, so 60 frames, and then they added in the big hook. It wasn't just cut and paste from the original battle system. They added in the chain attacks and the linking and how it numbers it, and kind of gives you your own challenge to say, okay, I wanna keep my own chain attack going so I can just do that, right? Because it's just addicting to do it. But then they also added in the triple team attacks and they added in being able to switch out your characters so it gives you more playability with the cast whereas before you usually just stuck with your three and that was going to be it but with the triple team attacks and based off of the different things that you can do in the game you actually want to switch things up a bit and i found that to be such a huge improvement over the original super mario rpg plus the charm the writing the characters everything still holds up decades later to me that is the spirit of an incredible game base but then also a remake as well taking all the things that you love enhancing them improving it and making it even better overall the music oh my goodness i can talk about this for so long the music was retuned remastered remade you can listen to the original score or you can listen to the new music the new remixed ones and it's so good i love the music in the game super mario rpg pretty much is exactly what you want to see out of a remake taking that original game 
They added in some extra content as well. After you beat the game, you can go through and replay the bosses and they're a lot harder than the original. It would have been nice if they did a little bit more, but they still put some effort into that. You have the great music, the original score. You can play the new one, the complete graphical overhaul that still has the spirit of the original. Everything about this game is just almost perfect when it comes down to it. And it was a joy from start to finish. I had a huge grin on my face, smiling the whole time that I played the game. Probably could have been a little bit harder too, though. That's why it's not completely perfect. I think the difficulty, they should have added a harder mode. They have a easy mode in the game, then they have a normal mode, but they should have added a hard mode as well. Then it really could have been like, okay, this game's kind of perfect overall. But what are your top best remakes remasters re-releases on the nintendo switch let me know in the comment section below all right guys that wraps it up for this video here thank you so much for watching i do appreciate it please make sure you hit that like button subscribe if you're someone new click that notification bell and check out my other nintendo switch and rpg videos right here on screen thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys for the next one peace